Uh, our first presenter is Louise Abbott. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Louise's husband, Niels Jensen, has fallen ill and, and they were unable to come, but they did send uh, their video. Louise and her husband, Niels Jensen, have worked together in Northern Canada since 2007 on various photo and video projects for the Cree agencies and for the Inuit government in Nunavut. Nunaluk, a forgotten story, resurrects the story of a resourceful, independent Inuit who lived on Cape Hope Island, which is called Nunaluk, in southeastern James Bay. Um, here's a message from Louise. My bags were packed, and I was so looking forward to being in Toronto with you all. But my normally healthy husband and co-producer, Niels Jensen, woke up this morning with the flu. So I had no choice but to cancel our travel plans. I'm grateful to Alex Gusev for inviting us to show Nunaluk a forgotten story at the symposium, and to Dave Young for introducing the film on our behalf. I'm also grateful to uh, COTA, the Cree organization that wanted to commemorate the story of a remarkable group of Inuit who once lived among the Cree in southeastern James Bay. It was a privilege to be asked by CODA to bring the story of Nunaluk to the screen. Louise Abbott. And I guess we're ready for the DVD. The family, including my other grandfather, start looking around and they ended up in Cape Hope. My grandfather named it Nunaluk, the big island, and I don't think he named it because of its size, but he was uh, really amazed the amount of animals that were there. Ptarmigan in winter and rabbits, seals all winter and summer. In May or July, the whales would come by. And of course, uh, all the geese and ducks arrive in summer. And uh, all kinds of fish that we netted. Summer Inuit women would be picking berries while the men went hunting, or they would be uh, picking mussels and sea urchins. The man just hunts the, the animal and brings it back, and it's the women who clean it, who know the, the bones, where to cut, and things like that. When the ship arrived from from Great Well, they had no choice. They were told they had to move. The Department of Northern Affairs at that time had an administrator in Great Well who did not like traveling, did not like traveling. And he wanted all the Inuit to be in Great Well. They had to go in the boat, leave everything and their dogs. The RCMP didn't want dogs around. They said that you don't need them anymore, but uh, people needed them. 